well good morning um beautiful beautiful sunny day we're really into the kind of the early days of summer now i guess um but uh on this beautiful day i wanted to come to you and and talk to you about family um you know i i know this lady she's very elderly um, i think she's about 91 years old now um, I studied with her son, or her adult son, for a couple of years, actually. Uh, and through him, I got to know his mother. And uh, went up and visited her at her house, and, and, uh, and got, you know, we just really got to know each other a little bit. And love her all the pieces, and she loves me. I mean, it's, it's really wonderful when you uh, get to meet people through... Um, uh, efforts to reach out to them for the Lord. And uh, I talked to her son one day about the idea of including her in our Bible studies. And invariably, his answer was always, uh, she's not into organized religion. She doesn't, uh, she doesn't feel the need for it. Uh, she has a little bench up in the woods. She likes to go up there and just be alone with God and have uh, have time with God, and that's her religion. Um, so she feels content with that. Sadly, that's not the way the Lord intended it. Um, I'm sure that it's a wonderful thing, and if you don't have the Lord's Church anywhere near, I suppose you can do that. Um, Juan Monroy, that uh, brother in Christ that uh, was so well, that's another story another time. But suppose, let me just, just say that um, when you look at what the scriptures say, it's very clear that God never intended us to be floating out there solo. Uh, there's huge uh, benefit. There's huge encouragement to being part of a family. Not a physical family, a spiritual family. In the Old Testament, when you look at the children of Israel uh, and them as a nation, uh, they were referred to as the Kahal, which is a Hebrew word that, meaning uh, community. And it was very tight-knit, and there was a lot of love and unity because they were all children of God. That was their, He was their spiritual leader. He was the one that uh, established the commandments they lived by, and, and they were his people. Uh, in the New Testament, we have the very parallel over in First Peter that talks about um, that that we are um, we are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, and, and you know God's own people. Uh, and it very much taking the same imagery that it comes out of the Old Testament and ascribing it to the church. And this whole idea of the church is just so important. Because what happens is when you are part of the body of Christ, part of his church, there is a love and a unity and a support group, if you will, uh, that is just unparalleled. Um, you look at a passage over in Ephesians where it talks about uh, Jesus. Actually, this whole passage in Ephesians chapter 5 is about marriage. Uh, and this is what it says in, in chapter 5 of Ephesians uh, verse 25, and it says, Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, that he might present the church to himself in all splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. The whole idea of the church is not just a social group where you come together for 10 minutes and they say hi and goodbye and you're out of there. No. What you have here is a body of brothers and sisters in Christ that were cleansed and sanctified and, and purified, made to be beautiful for becoming the bride of Christ. The church is his bride. And that relationship is just like no other. And so when you look at the scriptures and you look at what it says, you realize um, that as idealistic and uh, fanciful as it might be for some sweet elderly lady to make a little walk up into the woods and sit on a bench, 
um, and try to get close to God. God intended for us to be together. He intended for, for us to have the kahal or the community, not just co community, but a relationship as brothers and sisters in Christ. Be a family. It's, not, it's more than a community. It's family. One of the neat things about it is it's not just for our benefit. When you become a Christian, it is a, an awesome encouragement because here's the deal. We're all on that pathway to heaven. We're all working at it together. And I'll tell you what, you know, some of us struggle. And for those that struggle, there are brothers and sisters in Christ that are there to pick you up, to help you, to help us. I mean, it, it, it's supposed to be wide-reaching that all of us care about one another, love one another. And that love that we have for one another is something that is useful to the body because it gets us all up and walking on the path, not just, uh, not just individually. I'll tell you what, one person all by themselves, Satan can nail you. But when you're there with other brothers and sisters in Christ and you have uh, a sin that comes up in your life or a struggle that you're working with, guess what? You have somebody that you can go to and care. Uh, you know what? Uh, I'm not telling any names, but I'll tell you right now, as a minister, I have heard it again and again and again that when people come to me and say, brother, could you be praying for me? Could you pray with me? Because I'm struggling with this or I'm struggling with that. That's what it's about. And it's not just about a minister and his uh, his brother or sister in Christ that he's serving. It's about us as family helping each other out. Uh, there's another part to this. And that is that when Jesus said, go into all the world and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, uh, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, the Great Commission, that Great Commission uh, was not a solo responsibility. He was giving that to his apostles, but it is a, a responsibility that comes down to his church today because we are to be the salt of the earth, the light of the world. And I want to share with you uh, a, a concept here uh, because I guarantee one person can help another person. But when you have a family of brothers and sisters in Christ loving each other, caring about each other, and you use that as a, as a basis for what, from which to reach out into the world, amazing things can happen. I've told this story again and again in the congregation down here, but I'm going to tell it again here, and we're going to finish up with this. Many, many years ago, I was working with a church over in Conway, New Hampshire, and um, I just baptized a young couple, and uh, they were just so excited to want to become Christians, to want to be baptized. I almost, almost ran over me on the way to the baptistry. They just, just once they learned the truth and learned what it took, what that needed to do to have their sins washed away and to become Christians, um, they said, can we invite our neighbor? I said, sure. <laughs> uh, what a neat thing. I'll, I'll, I am joyful every time I remember this. And uh, that night uh, that we got together at the building and, and did their baptisms, uh, their back door neighbor, they lived in an apartment up front and their neighbor back to the back of them was uh, a very big guy uh, named Scott. And I'm not going to give his last name. And Scott came that night. And after we got done with the baptisms and we're all gathered around as a congregation holding hands. I think of that with all this social distancing stuff that we got going on. But anyway, we're all gathered around as brothers and sisters in Christ, holding hands and singing songs together and praying together and welcoming this new young couple into the body, into the family. Uh, that guy named Scott, that big guy, uh, was there and he was holding hands. I don't remember. I remember where he was in the circle. And that night he came to me later. He said, you know, I felt like I was a kid standing, looking through the window of a candy store. I could see what was inside, but I wasn't a part of it. It was, it was 
I could see the love. And and he, he just saw all of this incredible love and unity and, 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 and joy going on. But he wasn't a part of it. And he knew that. And he wanted to study the Bible. And I'll tell you what. That family that gathered that night and held hands and loved on each other and welcomed that new young couple, as, as that man named Scott witnessed that, it was the very thing that made him want to become a Christian, want to study the Bible. And the joyful conclusion to that is, ultimately, he was baptized into Christ. I'll tell you what, I've baptized a lot of people <laughs> over my years, but when I baptized Scott, that was one big guy to bring back up out of the water. Uh, it, was, it was an awesome experience. And so I just encourage you, don't neglect the meeting of yourselves together in, in the Lord's church. It is so important that we be together. We've been separated now for two months from in the church here in, in Queechee because of the Corbett thing. And the governor just today, as a matter of fact, freed us to go ahead and begin worshiping again. And we've got all the pieces in place, all, per, all the precautions. Yeah, we're going to do that. But tomorrow we're going to worship again. And last night and this morning, I called every single member of the congregation. Any, anybody that breathed got a call. And I cannot tell you uh, the joy that I heard when people heard that they were going to be able to come together and, and to worship again. It was such a neat thing. Such a neat thing. One of the one of the joyful things about the Lord's Church is that it is family. And it is a place of joy. And it is a place of love and support and caring. And that's the way it ought to be. That's the way God designed it. And so I encourage you, um, search out the Lord's Church. Search out those who are teaching the truth of God's Word. The churches of Christ are amazing at that, and I, I just encourage you to look it up. Uh, one of the things I, I'm just going to say here in conclusion is that um, I've enjoyed doing this series. I think I may continue. As of right now, we're going to be going back to worshiping on Sundays, and, and this is kind of not as needed, perhaps, because I've been trying to send this out to our the church family while we've not been together uh but i'll tell you that's this has been a joy to me to be able to do these and i hope these have been the things that uh have been useful in your life and i hope that you will um to use them and uh well that's enough um love you guys i'm glad that you've been a part of all this and and uh i'll try to keep doing these uh, but uh what a, what a fun time. What an enjoyable time it's been uh, sharing these things with you. So let's go ahead and bow for prayer. And uh, I'm going to be praying for our congregation as we gather tomorrow that we'll do it right and we won't uh, uh, have any sickness. We'll be really, really careful. Uh, but I'll tell you what, we're told uh, to encourage one another to love and good works and not neglect the meeting of ourselves together. So uh, let's just pray about that. Father, we thank you so much. Uh, for your son Jesus, for the salvation that we have in him, for the relationship that we have with one another as, as Christians, as we gather together that we're the family of our Heavenly Father. And we have you as our Savior, and we have this relationship where we're all here from one another and caring about one another. And Father, I pray, Lord, that you will use your church uh, to reach out and to glorify you and to... Uh, bring others to your son, Jesus. And Father, pray that you'll be with us tomorrow as we worship and they, that these are uh, this will be a, a, a marvelous time when we get together and we lift up songs of praise to you, uh, songs of rejoicing and thanksgiving because you have uh, brought us through this time and we're able to get back together again. And for, Father, may the Lord bless the teaching of your word uh, tomorrow as I preach. And Father, may you bless these lessons that we've been bringing, that they might be of service and a spiritual help to others. We pray all these things through Jesus Christ. Amen. Good to have been with you, and uh, God bless you. Hope you have a great day.